So as a medical doctor, you've been giving your inputs on uh, various public hearings yeah. on the introduction of GM foods. Um, so what what has have your inputs been on uh, the health hazards? Yeah. It was very specifically about the introduction of BT brinjal. Huh? And uh, BT cotton has already been allowed. Huh? So uh, the fact uh, we have no shortage of brinjal, huh? which is aubergine. Huh? And uh, second thing is that we have 4,000 varieties and they're different shapes, different sizes, linked to different recipes. And uh, it's all, some varieties are also used for Ayurveda. Huh? So the fact is, why would any multinational company want to bring in uh, genetically modified brinjal when we really do not need it? Uh, and do a 90-day study allegedly on biosafety, a very short study which does not look, look into many parameters and also not even intergenerational and say safe, safe, safe. And it's by the same people who are doing the study who want to introduce it and who also hold the intellectual property right. So the, when these hearings were held, and they were held for P.T. Brinjal, not for other things, uh, and the, there were ecological dimension, agriculture dimension presented by others. Uh, my the submissions I made and they were related to <coughs> basically the health hazards associated with it. Now the uh, studies that have taken place in different places and they've not been of BT brinjal alone. They've been of GM foods, and they have shown. And I'll tell the more gross ones. Uh, definitely the one of the top energy. It's a gene and it's protein and allergenicity. Huh? And there are actually three genes that are being introduced. So one is the uh, Bacillus thuringiensis gene to produce pesticide continu continuously. Second gene is antibiotic resistant marker. And what our concern is that if there is a, you know, genetic contamination and horizontal transfer of gene, that antibiotic resistance is a public health problem. You know, you could spread. And third, they have what they call uh, cauliflower, you know, mosaic, <coughs> uh, cauliflower, uh, cauliflower mosaic virus gene, third one. So how these genes will interact with each other? Most of the people do not know, they just know BT this and BT that. And when we are asking the question that how many studies have been done about their interaction and their effect on the microorganisms, their effect on the different virus and bacteria in the gut, uh, they say, you know, everything all right, all right. The Mahiko own study has shown that the changes in the gut, the changes in the pancreas, liver function. And when I say pancreas, because India has the highest number of diabetes, the, you know, people with diabetes. Uh, allergenicity is one of the things, tumorogenicity, you know, tendency for tumors. But the uh, studies about GM uh, fed on animal studies, on animals fed GM food and those not fed, difference has been higher offspring death and second generation, third generation infertility. So <clears throat> besides this, there are a whole range from, you know, respiratory problem to reproductive to neurological and, and these have been basically documented by different researchers and studies. But one other thing that we've seen, that all those people who have found anything negative have been hounded, like Dr. Arpit Putsai, who was caught and who showed that there were changes in the testes of the animals, huh? discoloration. That means obviously it's going to affect fertility. And that there were ulcers in the gut. And he was not a person who was anti-GM. He was basically someone who was really open-minded and did these studies and made these studies public and he was thrown out of his job. So then we say, why should anyone doing a good scientific study need to be thrown out of the job? What is there to hide? So anyway, <coughs> the long and short of it, we made these concerns, you know, communicated these concerns to the, you know, Environment Minister, Mr. Jairam Ramesh. Then he called for a meeting. He said, you come. I'm also part of Doctors for Food and Biosafety and uh, <clears throat> made the concerns known in detail. 
loss of biodiversity, uh, the lo not, not only that, what implication it would have for many, many, but mainly focusing on public health and nutritional food. And because those are things uh, like many farmers have felt the seed prices go up because of the intellectual problem. There are whole different uh, dimension to the problem, you know, of genetically modified food. And we really don't have the shortage of especially brinjal and fruits and vegetables. And this is the area they want to get into because 20 years patent, then the royalty and the control. And 70% uh, uh, of our agriculture is with uh, peasants and employment is 70% uh, of the people are employed agriculture related. And this for them is a livelihood issue. It's a survival issue. So any fooling around with this kind of thing is going to be massive, massive forced displacement from livelihoods and the survival you know, co options closing down with nothing else being offered. So... <coughs> Those are some of the very uh, deep concerns and the more one has been studying and one is finding that how much the corporations are having to do with the issue of food, nutrition, agriculture across the board in decision making at the international level and at the national level well, and in the research institutes. Why is it that um, say the USDA is able to approve so many GM yes. foods as yes, substantially yes. equivalent yes, yes. to um, because, normal foods? No, because when uh, clearance was given for these foods, they were treated as, as you said, substantially equivalent. That means they are like nature. So natural foods don't have any hazard. So moral of the story, equal to no hazards. But when it comes to taking the patent, then they're supposed to be different. And then you take uh, intellectual property right on that. And then you take the royalty into everything. And then it's supposed to be different. Total double standard. And uh, people in the US FDA, like the person, well, I would like to check, take the name of Anne Veneman. She was associated with pushing or some of these things, was associated with indirectly, directly with Monsanto. And then she's with the U.S. state, whatever. Huh? And then UNICEF chief. And now on the board of Nestle. So, and like we have Food Safety Standards Authority Act in India, and we have an authority, and we have the expert committees, and you see the number of corporate bodies and their interests and their people who are on the expert committees. So research being influenced, expert bodies and regulation being uh, influenced. And the third thing is that because of the money power, you know, that uh, the promotion and the pushing as the only option or we'll all drop down dead, there'll be no food. That, you know, basically you call it massive brainwashing. Uh, where people actually believe that there is no option. And for a country which has had abundant of option, you know, what an insult. What an insult. And they think everybody is going to be running after their little pennies, whatever they would, you know, everybody is not purchasable. A lot of young people who understood it at, uh, have been so articulate about it. From science, uh, from agriculture, you know, uh, young uh, stu students, very creative. So especially related to Brinjal, you know, the BT Brinjal. When the hearings took place, because they took about six hearings across the country, uh, you had farmers and you had all kind of thing, and you had a lot of young people. Because many of them are feeling, how dare they? You know, because they're seeing the bullying in that. And also, with a lot of scams coming out in India, that many people who are in decision making, uh, in, in different issues, basically becoming, you know, what you say, more faithful and more devoted and bending over backwards three times uh, to oblige for the century. Uh, and, but uh, because of the, uh, you know, the food crisis, which is going to unfold the way things are, and climate change is going to make it worse, that uh, some of these things are going to be pushed out of. And the, it's like, you know, 
uh, once enough people can describe the emperor's clothes as they are see nobody will be taken for a ride just to show people knowing do you think consumers are becoming more aware or is there still apathy or how can consumers become more aware should they push for more labeling will that help no labeling uh, for vegetables and fruits impossible that's true impossible so it, it is like uh, you know in mexico 70% of the traditional maize has already been polluted you know genetic pollution uh, with the genetically modified so the question is how are you going to label that this is you know gm uh, and this is non gm so there are certain things you say prevention is better than cure and you're doing it for so many health problems when health hazards related to some of these technologies are known and you know that mainly it's a corporate interest and the intellect intellectual property if it's so wonderful we say remove your ipr would you want to still sell it they don't want to if they're so deeply heart is you know you know bleeding for the poor then you know remove your ipr's intellectual but they're not willing because it's a issue of profit and, uh, you know interest and unfortunately in the pharmaceutical sector concern that you know the whining and dining of the pharma companies or the doctors is well known and their brands and the pushing and the conferences and you know trips to bangkok it you know different places paid for with spouse for a 3 hour seminar and everybody's prescription changes this is known this is very well known and also people to speak on scientific forums paid by the companies is known so the mainstream medical bodies here i'm talking curative care you know writing prescription and the, that you will not hear them speak much about this because the public health concerns have never engaged them never they have nothing to say about nutrition unless is selling some nutraceuticals it's the public health minded people public interest people who speak on the health impact of these issues and and that's why when more and more pharmaceuticalization of healthcare more and more commercialization of healthcare you know more and more corporatization of healthcare the corporate interests of pharmaceuticals of seeds you know of uh, from pesticides and foods the corporate interests all comes together and it really doesn't matter if it is us or you know eu or india because those corporate bodies have you know exist in all of them and they are above nations so to deal with them uh, you know is one is to basically expose the lies and number two ensure that the researchers who are doing autonomous independent research continue to be supported and they are not hounded and i mean know the whole list of people who been hounded and also uh, unbiased information be made available to the people and i guess for people to support campaigns yes, definitely, against you definitely thank you definitely. so much